This is the first of three poems I've written for donors for the Wasatch Wordsmiths. This poem is for Nathan Martin. Nathan will always be my favorite pantalone. Here we go. When they say there are fates worse than death, they're talking about me. I never believed them. Always called bullshit. Nothing's worse than death. Nothing, I said. No matter how painful or pathetic, life is a blessing, right? Nothing's worse than death. Then I grew this cartoonishly large scrotum in the middle of my face. And yeah, they were right. Can you imagine what it's like? No matter where you go, no matter what you do, everything always smelling like balls. Pubes falling in your food. Jerks at the beach always asking if you're cold. I have to run with one hand on my face whenever I play sports. I have to lift these boys out of the way whenever I eat. You know what it's like to bite your tongue? Try accidentally biting a ball. I live in constant fear that something startling will happen just off to one side, causing me to involuntarily jerk my head around, sending my ball sack crashing back and forth between my cheekbones like a Chinese spin drum or some kind of Newton's pendulum from hell. Kill me now. Whenever those bastards fed me the whole fate worse than death line, it was always in a context like... Remember to wear your seatbelt, there are fates worse than death. Or, or don't drive drunk, there are fates worse than death. Nobody ever told me, don't piss off a wizard, there are fates worse than death. Because if they had, maybe I wouldn't have a cartoonishly large scrotum growing out of the middle of my fucking face. And given the large number of people I have recently met via online social media that have pissed off wizards, you'd think that don't piss off a goddamn wizard would be at least in the top three uses of the fate's worse than death warning meme. Like Frank, whose armpits were replaced with vaginas. Deodorant does nothing for him. Or Virgil, whose eyeballs grew nipples. You'd think that wouldn't be too bad, but after just one night of REM sleep, Virgil couldn't take it. Slit his wrists in the morning, only to find his blood replaced with semen. He lay there dead for about two hours, then sat right back up, ready to keep going. Poor Johnny had all his zits turn into clitorises, and Rebecca had her clitoris turn into a zit, which popped. Tom and Marcus both had their mouths and their anuses switched. Mina had all her hair follicles replaced with teeth. All of them. And Mrs. Redenbacher's entire second grade class all grew fingers out of their nostrils. A room full of 46 extra wiggling little digits and not a single nose for them to pick. We few. We miserable few, we wizard pisser offers, truly we are what your mother should have warned you about. But someone also should have warned that motherfucking wizard, Zargon, or Zoloft, or whatever the hell his magical little fairy name is. That wizard is fucked. Because when you learn to survive with a cartoonishly large scrotum in the middle of your face, you have nothing to lose. After my hideously deformed band of brothers and I have beaten his magical mystery ass down to the ground, as I crouch over his barely conscious body, teabagging him with my face, he will know with a surety there are most definitely fates worse than death. Thank you so much, Nathan. And remember, if anybody else would like to donate to the Wasatch Wordsmiths in our campaign to get us to the National Poetry Slam in Cambridge, Massachusetts, just click on the Indiegogo link at the bottom. Thank you so much.